Phlebotomy, Lesson 2.4, Types of Circulation. There are two types of circulation. Pulmonary, which goes from the right side of the heart to the lungs and back to the left side of the heart, and systemic, from the left side of the heart to the body tissues and back to the right side of the heart. Pulmonary circulation moves blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs for reoxygenation and then returns it back to the left side of the heart. This is a heart-lungs-heart pathway. Systemic circulation moves blood from the left side of the heart to the body to distribute nutrients and oxygen and back to the right side of the heart. This is a heart-body-heart -heart circulation. Blood must remain in the circulatory system. Blood travels throughout the blood vessels using the vessels as a transportation system. It travels from the heart through arteries, capillaries, and veins and then back to the heart. Blood that leaves this system for any reason will clot and die. As the blood is transported to the capillaries through the arteries, the gases and nutrients move through the cell walls but the red blood cells remain in the vessels. The blood delivers oxygen and nutrients and picks up waste products. It then moves into the veins and progresses to the liver and kidneys to be filtered so that waste products can be removed from the body. Finally, the blood is transported back to the heart to be recirculated to the lungs and body again. The heart beats about 60 to 100 times a minute and circulates about 5 liters of blood every minute. It never stops beating. If it did, our tissues would not receive oxygen and nutrients. Blood is moved through the arteries by the pumping action of the heart. The blood progresses as a wave through the arterial system, which can be felt as a pulse under the fingers when the artery is compressed. Blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. The blood travels to all the body's tissues from the aorta through arteries which branch into smaller arterioles, which become even smaller capillaries. Arteries flow away from the heart. They have thick, elastic walls that expand and contract. They branch off into smaller arteries called arterioles, and they're located deep in muscle tissue. Arteries have a pulse that is felt when a wave of blood is pushed through. All blood vessels that take blood away from the heart are called arteries. Arteries are composed of three layers, the tunica intima, or the innermost layer, the tunica media, or the middle layer, and the tunica externa, or the outer layer. Arteries usually carry oxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary artery. Because of this, arterial blood is usually bright red in color because of the oxygen molecules on the red blood cells. Arteries branch off into smaller arterioles, which then branch off into one-cell-thick capillaries. These tiny, hair-like vessels cover every organ and structure throughout the body. Every cell in the body must be able to make contact with a capillary to receive oxygen and nutrients and rid itself of waste products. The capillary network is where all gas exchange takes place. Capillaries are small structures that lie between arterioles, which are small arteries, and venules, which are small veins. Blood flows from the arteries into the arterioles and then into the capillaries, where gas and nutrients enter the cells and waste products leave. Capillaries then merge together to form tiny veins called venules, which then merge together to form veins. Veins then empty into the vena cava. Oxygenated blood travels through arteries into smaller arteries called arterioles. These become even smaller capillaries. When oxygenated blood reaches the capillaries, the oxygen and nutrients move from the capillaries into the tissues. Waste products move from the tissues into the capillaries. These waste products enter the bloodstream and travel through tiny veins called venules into veins to be transported to the cleaning organs and ultimately back to the heart. Capillaries join the arteries and veins and are microscopic vessels only one cell thick. This is where gas and nutrient exchange occurs. 
Capillaries are on the surface and inside of every organ and structure of the body to provide every cell in the body with nutrients and oxygen. In the lungs, this capillary system wraps around small air sacs called alveoli. This is where carbon dioxide is removed from the blood and the blood becomes reoxygenated. All gas exchange takes place in the capillary system of the body and in the alveoli of the lungs. Veins. Veins transport blood back toward the heart. They have thinner walls and they're not as elastic as arteries. Large veins are made up of smaller veins called venules joining together. Veins have valves that help prevent the backflow of blood. And they're located both deep in muscle tissue but also superficially or close to the surface of the skin. Blood vessels that take blood toward the heart are called veins. Veins are comprised of three layers, just like arteries, but the layers are not as elastic. And veins have valves in them to keep the blood flowing in only one direction. Veins usually carry deoxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary vein. Because of this, venous blood is usually dark red in color because of the absence of oxygen molecules on the red blood cells. Blood moves through veins primarily through muscle contractions in the muscles surrounding the veins. There is some pressure in the vein from the heart's pumping action, but it's minimal due to the dispersion of pressure from traveling from the arteries to the capillaries and then to the veins. This graphic indicates the blood vessel cycle starting with the heart. Blood progresses from the heart through the aorta into arteries and then arterioles, which become capillaries where gas exchange takes place. Those capillaries join together to become venules, which create larger veins, which empty into the vena cava and returns the blood back to the heart to be sent to the lungs for reoxygenation. The blood vessels, except for the capillaries, are composed of three layers. The tunica adventitia or tunica externa, which is the outer layer, the tunica media, which is the middle smooth muscle layer, and the tunica intima, or interna, the inner endothelial layer. This chart shows common differences and similarities between the arteries, capillaries, and veins. You may want to print this off for reference later. We have now learned about the types of circulation in each one of the blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. It's important to understand the differences between the vessels as a phlebotomist because we will be obtaining blood from them. Now progress to Lesson 2.5 for a review of the concepts covered so far.